Welcome back to Grand Prix World. You can call me Zero, and last time we we qualified 7th and 10th uh, for the Brazilian Grand Prix, which was way above our expectations. Um, we're about to dive into the race. This is, I'll be honest with you, this is the second attempt to record this race. Uh, the reason for that is that the length of the race means the videos are coming out at something like 70 to 80 gigabytes, and... I wanted to put a video out for you today. I don't have time to encode and process a video of that size, so we're going for a second take. Um, brief summary of what happened in the last race. We got to about half distance before I got the, the warning that the size of the file was ridiculous. Um, we had a wet start to the race. Uh, Sarlo got up to 5th position, had a fantastic start, whereas Deniz fell to 13th and then lost his front front wing so obviously we pulled him in to replace that and uh, honestly his race went to complete garbage from there on in um Salo at the midpoint of the race had also had to stop due to a stop go penalty and um he had a penalty and then we pulled him in for a pit stop which i hoped was going to take him to the end of the race um and it had stopped raining and so obviously that threw that strategy into question a little bit I'm going to speak as quickly as I can because I'm very, very short for time today, but it was really important to me to get this video out to you and get things done. Just before we dive into the race, there are a few sort of, I suppose, mini announcements to make and just a few things to clarify. Um, first of all, the aim is, at least initially, while there's not a great many of us and, you know, we're just doing this for fun, um, the aim is for going forward two, maybe three videos a week, probably two, and that would be ideally from uh, Wednesdays you would get a qualifying episode um, so that would be all the decisions uh, that we would make um, based on the outcome of the previous race so we're talking progress with sponsor contracts etc then the Saturday or Sunday it obviously will depend on my my schedule that will cover a race um, as for the format of the race I welcome any feedback you have today for the sake of brevity, I'm just going to jump in and out at various points in the race. Um, if I capture something great, then that's fantastic. Otherwise, it's going to be very much a too late to see kind of deal where I'm going to be describing to you some of the events that have happened. Um, at the start, we'll cover the first lap and I'll briefly go over what sort of controls and options are available to you. But other than that, I'll just try and update you periodically and speed through the race. So it might be a short video today. Um, I really don't know. The other elements of business we have to go over are... If you're here from the F1 videos that I make with Simon over on High Plane Games, which is probably all of you for the first few months, uh, and bear in mind when I'm talking about these things, this is kind of like a, a time capsule that I'm sending 12 months into the future. It could be a long while before we're at the stage where the things I'm about to talk about sort of take effect. But the most pressing issue, of course, is that F1 2015 is out soon. For the last three years, Simon and I have completed a co-op season, which has sort of graduated from what basically started out as a, a video games um, audio podcast to us playing games together, to graduating to just full-on real F1 discussion, running concurrently to our virtual F1 season. Um, it's been fantastic. I've had so much fun doing that, and I consider Simon to be a very, very good friend. F1 is my favourite sport. Codemasters F1 games, I think, are pretty fantastic. Um, unfortunately, the situation with my new PC hasn't come out quite the way I wanted. I'm not happy to proceed with, with the deal. Something about it doesn't smell right. And rather than rush into um, a different arrangement and then regret it later and essentially waste money buying an interim system. I'm going to hold off and try and make a more sensible purchase, purchase decision maybe a few months from now. What that means almost for certain, although we are going to try, but what it does mean is the launch night video will be solo Simon. I think that's pretty much guaranteed. We will try and record together, but I really don't think the machine I'm recording this on is capable of, of keeping up with that. Um, then hopefully eventually um, we'll be able to get into the regular season again as soon as possible. I really do hope. Um, worst case scenario will be we probably skip a season, but what I like to hope is that there's someone out there who can fill in for me for a season, someone that has the same sort of chemistry with Simon, and the show can carry on regardless, and then once I'm able 
to um, to film again um, will come back bigger and better than before. Obviously, I wanted a more powerful machine, give you guys some onboard footage from my vantage point as well as Simon's. I know a lot of people complained, um, at least in the 2013 season, that um, Simon's uh, viewpoint for those videos was not their preferred one and they wanted some in-cockpit shots. And that's perfect because I've always driven from uh, cockpit view. So we would like to do some more polished, edited, professional, well, it's been Simon, so semi-professional kind of content at some point. But just wanted to give you guys a heads up that situation. Um, likewise, the other announcement is obviously for the first few weeks, it's going to be all Grand Prix World all the time. Um, I really don't have a great deal of time and this isn't certainly isn't a job for me. This is just a, a side activity. Um, and frankly, bringing out two videos a week is already quite difficult with my schedule. But at some point, once we have a bit of a bro community going, um, given how hard it is to get hold of a legitimate copy of this game and how many of the torrented versions contain malware and all kinds of different problems, um, I would like to do something similar to what Jim Sterling does over on his channel, which is to play games as a community. So we would probably follow the same kind of video format as, as these playthroughs, which would be to um, do a qualifying and a race video separately. And between those videos, we'd allow the community to vote on various things and we'd run the team together. And that would run alongside this solo playthrough where I'm trying to showcase the game for you. Um, Eventually I would like to do some other videos as well, probably something like Sunless Sea or another management sim. haven't really thought about it, but again, any comments and feedback I'm incredibly grateful for and I will try and take people's viewpoints on board. Um, just wanted to let you guys know what the situation is. So back to business. Um, we're about to dive into the race in Brazil. I've already waffled on much longer than I intended to. Let's make that happen. We have Deniz in 7th I think and Solo in 10th. Um, as soon as I hit this button, it will go straight into race. There'll be no build-up time. Very sorry about that. Nothing I can do. Let's do it. Okay, so what we want is we want Denis to hold his place. We want Sarlo to try and push. Simply because we already know from the stats that Sarlo is much better in the wet than Denis is. And away they go. Let's see. All right, there we are, and that's worked. Sarlo is straight up to sixth. We don't want him to push anymore. He can hold that position. What has happened to Deniz? He went from... I believe he was 5th for a brief moment down to 22nd. Obviously something has gone badly wrong there. Maybe he had a spin. The camera didn't really capture it. That's the problem with these static shots, of course. That Because the game isn't sort of dynamically rendered, um, it's just you know, virtual models driving over a photograph of a track with some very poor rain effects, I might add. Um, we couldn't really see what happened to him there. Um, there doesn't seem to be any... No, it's not marked as an accident. And, oh, the performance of this game is tanking. So I do apologise for that as well. Um, we're going to let him complete this first lap and then I will cut the video and we'll come back probably around pit stop time, see what's what, and we'll go from there. Interesting to see the McLarens are running 1-2. One, one of the Williams has got up as well. Um, and Salo is ninth now, in amongst the Saubers and the Stuarts and the Jordans, which is kind of where you would hope to be. Um, once you're in sort of Prost Tyrrell territory, then that's a sign that you're, you're probably underperforming. Again, it's very hard to judge true pace in the wet, of course. And um, the, as the field becomes more diffuse over time, we'll probably get a better idea of where we're, we're really at. Deniz has gained two places though, which is good. Got in front of one of the Prosts and one of the Tyrrells. Um, I believe that's Takagi running at the back. Uh, something else interesting to note is you will see that uh, Jano Trulli is not in this race. Um, presumably he's been injured or something, but or perhaps he's fallen out with the team. It does, it does happen. Drivers can be let go or demoted all the time. You know, we could always kick out Pedro Deniz and replace him if we so wished, but um, for us, obviously, it wouldn't make financial sense. But what you'll see is that uh, Trulli is on the sidelines today, and we've actually got Stefan Sarazan uh, running at the back. Something to remember is you can always hire rookies and test drivers 
to your race seats, but they are always, always, always worse than experienced F1 drivers, just as they would be in real life, for the most part. We'll ignore Carlos Sainz and Max Verstappen for a moment. So what what really we could be looking at is, some people have already said to me that they would like me to give Salo a chance, given that he's obviously outperforming Diniz where it matters, in, in certainly today. Um, so I'm prepared to do that. We'll give him two or three races, and we'll also look at the, um, in the next video, we'll look at the alternatives to Salo, and we'll also talk about the benefits, I suppose, of taking on a rookie driver now and developing him over three or four seasons. Oh, Alexander Wurtz from seventh position is out of the race. Uh, let's take a look what's happened. He's had a hydraulic failure on lap two. That is a nightmare for Benetton. Deniz has got back up to 18, so we are ahead of the Minardis. Ricardo Rossi is running contrary to his actual F1 career um, in a respectable 16th, which is very good. Um, of course, the wet weather again does skew the field, and maybe there's been some some problems uh, for the cars running behind him, but still very nice to see a Tyrrell ahead of the Minardis um, after their terrible qualifying performance. I'm about to... I'll cut the video now, and I'll update you either when something interesting happens or when we get round to the pit stops again. I do apologise, it will be a short video today, but hopefully you enjoy seeing uh, the race in action. Um, back soon. Ugh. Okay, we're back a little bit earlier than I anticipated, mainly because we have Pedro Diniz, who's just got ahead of uh, Olivier Panis. He was being held up by him, so we gave him the order to overtake, and fortunately the car was capable of uh, meeting our request. Um, Mikasalo is running pretty well on his own. He's still ahead of Villeneuve. He's not going to catch the back of that Jordan. Uh, our engine, unfortunately, is no match for the, the Mugen Honda that he's got at his disposal, so we're not going to have him push simply because the conditions are a bit rough and the reliability issues of the car are really going to come into play, I think, during the course of this race. Um, just wanted to go over with you what options you have um, for communicating with your drivers. You can pit them at any time. So prior to the race, you set a pit strategy, which I believe you saw me do in the last video, um, where you can decide which tyres they put on, um, assuming you know a race stays dry, of course, and you can set which laps and how you want to fuel them. But you can call them in when they pick up damage, so you can call them in to switch the nose cone, for example. Um, also, you can change your pit strategy in response to those around you, which is a great feature, of course. Uh, then over here, you've got the uh, basically the speed up. You basically want them to run almost like a qualifying lap, I suppose. Um, then you can also tell them to cool off, um, simply when you know the car's at risk of going off. Speaking of which, we're going to give the overtake order to um, to Deniz. I don't know if you can see over here, he's actually being held up by two stewards. Um, he was right on their tail a few corners ago, and looking at the gap he's pulled out there to Olivier Panis, it's obvious that we have a little bit of uh, performance to play with here, and I'd like to get him past those stewards as soon as possible. It's far too early to sort of undercut them by, by pitting in, so let's see if we can get him round. Uh, it looks like he's got successfully... Yeah, he's got successfully passed both of them. So that was a great move by Deniz. We're going to take away the, uh, the overtake order, and already you can see he's pulling out a gap on the stewards. Now that's where you've got to really be on the ball, it makes it very hard when you're doing these videos. Uh, we're going to have Salo push as well, because he's got Villeneuve all over his gearbox. If we hadn't have paid attention there and just let Deniz run around behind those stewards, uh, obviously he's going to run a slower race first of all, but I believe also it's going to affect his tyre degradation. I believe the simulation is actually that deep, and what we really want is to get him if he gained another position, we got him into 12th, I'd be perfectly happy with that. That's about where we should be. 10th, 11th, 12th is statistically, assuming a perfect race, that's about where we should be. And he is gaining on, on the Sauber. I think we've, we stand a good chance, actually, of getting, getting through. So we'll let him catch up to Johnny Herbert and then make a call once he's on the gearbox. Um, but yeah... Other news, uh, we lost Esteban Tuero to uh, a uh, an engine failure in his Minardi. Um, and then we want to look at 
current uh, that's not even a word Ben current statistics for our cars and the track so the track hasn't really rubbered in yet it's obviously not dry at all really uh, 26 degrees heavy heavy rain and that's starting to cool the track actually um, looking over here you can see because we've been running um, Salo at an increased uh, rate of, of push as it were there is a danger of underfueling his car unintentionally. It hasn't happened yet and I've just rescinded the order from him because Villeneuve's got passed, there's no point fighting um, with the Williams at this point. We could end up burning our fuel quicker than we wanted which can lead to an unintended stop in the future as well as increasing wear on the car and the engine so good job we spotted that. Oh someone has had an engine pop. It looks like for a moment it looked like one of our cars but it isn't. Let's take a look who that was. That was Stefan Sarazan in the Prost. That's good, that's one of our potential rivals actually out of the picture. Uh, they were already at a disadvantage with them not running truly but it is great news for us, terrible news for them. Um, but he will not be seeing out the end of the race. Um, I've forgotten where I was. Uh, there is a yellow flag on track. Um, I don't know if that symbol means that Salah was speeding. Maybe he went round too fast, but there's been no notice of a penalty, so we'll assume everything's good there. I'm going to cut the video again now, and uh, we'll come back shortly. But hopefully I've remembered, I'll probably watch this back and realise that I haven't, but hopefully I've remembered to go over all the, the major controls. Um, this here is the pitch strategy, which we won't need to tinker with just now, but some point in the future we will and I'll happily go over that with you and you can change your driver orders on the fly but again we won't be tampering with that I think that covers everything I'll see you next time <sighs> Deniz is on the tail of uh, Johnny Herbert I've given him the overtake order let's uh, see him come through here Herbert is defending quite strongly I'm hoping we can get past at this corner and we have so that is Deniz up into 12th we're running 11th and 12th that's exactly where I hope we'll finish the race, but I don't think that's necessarily going to be the case. Um, I'm going to get him to ease off. I don't want him battling with um, Mika Salo, if at all possible, simply because it compromises both our races, but you can see already our performance is much better in the rain than we expected it to be. He is already pulling out a gap to that Sauber. Considering he was two, three laps ago down here with uh, Olivier Panis, like some kind of arsehole, he's absolutely flying so great performance from Deniz. Salo is maintaining a respectable distance um, to uh, Villeneuve and I believe that's Fisichella. Uh, yes it is because Wurtz is out of the race. Um, so I'm pretty happy with where we are at the moment. Uh, join me again soon. Ugh. So quick update. Uh, it does seem that uh, we are going to be in the unusual position of being lapped and lapping other drivers uh, within the course of the next few laps so um, I'm guessing two to three laps from now we are going to be on the back of the the back markers I believe a Tyrrell and a Minardi um, so we have to negotiate getting past those while simultaneously we'll be being lapped around this same time by uh, Schumacher and uh, I believe that's Mika Hakkinen um, Damon Hill's not too far behind actually, I think he's running third at the moment and his fastest lap is actually faster than Mika Hakkinen's which is fantastic news for Jordan, I don't think anyone was expecting that but again he is good in the wet. Um, as for an update on our guys, Deniz is catching Mika Salo, um, which is fine, um, we don't want them to get too close to each other but uh, everything looks solid so far. Um, thinking about it, Takagi should actually come out of our way. He picked up a blue flag penalty a few minutes ago, um, which is exactly what I'm concerned we could pick up if we're not careful, so I'll have to be on the ball and make sure to tell our guys to get out of Michael's way, or else we can end up with a 10 second penalty. That's going to do us no end of harm. Um, I'll see you for an update shortly. Ugh. Welcome back to the action where Johnny Herbert has actually moved to undercut us, so he's come in for his stop very, very early. Um, presumably that means that he's actually running a three stopper I would guess based on the position he's actually stopped in now. Um, in other news Olivier Panis has got a 10 second penalty for impeding Damon Hill which he's currently serving. 
um, our guys are still running pretty close together uh, six or seven seconds separates them and they're running um, nine seconds ish behind uh, Giancarlo Fisichelli who is also just coming for a stop so actually they've got past him that timing was out of date so we're now running 10th and 11th um, I'll update you shortly <sighs> okay so we have Pedro de Niz uh, lapping much faster, about two seconds a lap faster actually than Mika Salo. So we have to be very careful here to um, allow allow one through without letting that Jordan through. Um, we are actually ahead of, it's Ralph Schumacher just behind us who came out after his pit stop. We were pulling out a gap but that is no longer the case. Can can you please let him through, Mika? Please? There we go. Uh, so now we want him back up to racing speed. Perfect. And already you can see Deniz is actually pulling out a gap over, over Mika Salo, so that was the right call to make. Probably we made it a little bit too late, but we were able to make it successfully and we didn't lose that position to Ralph Schumacher, which is excellent news. See you for an update soon. Ugh. So the rain has stopped and probably at the very best time for us because we have a pit stop due in four laps for Deniz and five laps for Salo. Um, Salo is about to be lapped, however. Oh, and we've lost one of the Saubers, which again is excellent news for us. That looks like an engine blowout. I believe it's for Herbert. Yes, it is. Um, so first things first, I have to make sure that we don't get a penalty for Salo. Um, whilst we allow ourselves to switch up our pit strategy and get these guys out of the next pit stop on dry tyres. Um, obviously it will take maybe six or seven laps for the track to dry out, enough to really justify that, but I think it's appropriate. Oh, and we have a yellow flag. Oh, the, the yellow flag has cleared, that's excellent marshalling. Um, <laughs> So my main concern is not getting a 10 second stop goal penalty for Salo, so let's, um, let's try and get Michael through as soon as possible. Can you let him through please? Perfect. And then back up to speed. He is going to come up on Deniz at some point, but let's take this opportunity to switch up our pit strategy. So we want you out on fresh tyres, please. Another blue flag for Salo. I don't know who that was actually, the diagram's not really showing. Um, but we'll also change Salo's pit strategy. And, as ever, I'll be back with an update shortly. Ugh. So we've lost two more from the runners, actually. We've lost uh, Mika Hakkinen to an engine failure and Rubens Barrichello to a clutch problem. So they are dropping like flies. Um, Pedro Diniz is low on fuel because, uh, obviously, he's very, very close to um, coming in for his pit stop in two laps' time. So we'll pick up with uh, the action then. But he is up to seventh, which is fantastic. Ugh. Deniz is just exiting the pits. Um, Salo is on his in-lap as well, and I've asked him to put in a stormer. I don't actually believe he's... Um... Oh, wow. There was a pit stop fire for David Coulthard. That's both McLarens out of the race. Pedro Deniz rejoins in 10th, uh, which, again, is absolutely excellent. Um, obviously, we had a late stop compared to those around us, but... Given that uh, we've been able to time our switch to the dry tyres absolutely perfectly, ideally, I believe, we're going to see the Benetton and the Williams ahead of us have to squeeze in an extra pit stop or at least move out of their regular pit strategy, which should play into Deniz's hands to get us up to a comfortable eighth. All we need at that point is the smallest bit of luck to pick ourselves up a point, and a point really is in valuable um, in your opening season, especially playing as a team sort of arrows and below. So fingers crossed for that. Ugh. 
So the switch to the dry tyre has done Sarlo no favours. He seems to be really struggling. His lap times have really tailed off. You can see here the gap. He actually came out ahead of um, Pedro de Niers because he had a poor initial lap as well on the dry tyre. Um, he's now fallen way, way back. Um, and I've just had to give him orders to allow himself to be lapped. Um, I'm going to ask him to put his boot down a bit because we're falling into the clutches of Valace's Salva, which is not what, really what we want to see. Um, hopefully the track dries out pretty soon and this strategy call holds up, but at the moment it's not looking great. Well, unfortunately, the remainder of that race was a complete and utter snore fest. I'm actually having to come back and record this little part retroactively. Um, we had a suspension failure for Panis, an accident for Fisichella, but we missed it on camera and two engine failures that happened while I was blitzing through on fast speed. And unfortunately, um, I had to spend a lot of time on the increased speed because I'm really due out of the door any minute now, which won't always be a problem, but for this episode I'm afraid it is, so I do hope you'll forgive me. However, we did manage to secure ourselves 7th and 8th. Sarlo's pace really went off on the dry tyre, which was... He never really recovered from it, which is very, very unfortunate. Um, however... He didn't finish two laps down against Deniz, but Deniz held up very, very respectably. All we needed, really, was something to go wrong for one of the cars in front, and we could have picked up a point for ourselves, so I'm incredibly encouraged by that pace. We were the fastest Bridgestone team consistently throughout the race, um, which I really wasn't expecting. I guess the setup work we did in testing really, really paid dividends there. Also, you'll notice our budget has kind of maintained itself. We do need to start making savings now, though, because... Um, at the end of the season, the, the build for the new cars will cost about 1.5 million. So uh, join me next time as we try and boost that budget with some sponsors and we'll see how our negotiations have gone. Thanks so much for joining. I do apologise for the short race coverage, but it will be better next time out. And I'll see you for qualifying hopefully this coming Wednesday. There won't be a video this weekend, I don't think. See you soon.